I'm not gonna lie to you, the Word 2019 MO100 exam was the most challenging and confusing exam I have ever completed. Seriously, it should probably come with its own warning sign. Some of the tasks can sneak up on you. Some are just mean. And some tasks will even have you questioning your ability as a Microsoft Word user. But have no fear, I'm gonna make sure you know what types of skills are coming for you on your MO100 Word 2019 exam. Hi everyone, it's Mike from Mike's Office, and I think this meme beside me here perfectly demonstrates the problem with the MO100 exam or the training leading up to it. So. These first four steps in how to draw a horse, this is a lot like your MO100 training. It has you thinking, okay, I know how to draw a horse. This is awesome. And then this is what your MO100 exam is actually like. So you see the difference? I wanna make the steps in between those two horses accessible to you. And I want you to become certified in your Word 2019 exam so that you can unlock new opportunities for yourself. And if you wanna follow along with the four practice files that I have in this video, check out the link in the description box below to join my Patreon community where you can get all of the practice files and instructions that I upload for the price of a coffee. So task one is gonna ask us to remove the compatibility mode of this document. And let me explain that a little bit further. So this is something new to 2019 uh, in these exams. You're gonna notice in, the, uh, in my top of my screen here, beside the file name, it says compatibility mode. What that means is someone is using, I might be working with someone who has an earlier version of Microsoft Word, like 2010 or earlier, and compatibility mode is going to lock some of the newer features of the 2019 version of Word so that we can work together really well. Uh, for example, if I go to the insert tab, notice how the icons and the 3D models are no longer available. So icons are new. Uh, with the 2016 version. The 3D models are new with the 2019 version and those are disabled because I'm working with someone who has saved this file with an older version of Microsoft Word. So if you wanted access to those, you'd have to remove the compatibility mode and you'd have to tell your friend to uh, update to a newer version of Microsoft Word uh, to get those uh, special features. So to do that, I would go to the File tab and then I'm going to click the Info tab and you see this compatibility mode. Uh, I'm going to click the convert icon and it's going to ask me, are you sure you want to do this? Um, and then it's going to be upgraded. And once I press OK, notice that those features now turn on. So if you want, if someone was working with an older version of Microsoft Word and it says compatibility mode when they send you the document, um, you have to have a discussion with them whether you want the new features or just keep working uh, with an older version of Microsoft Word. Our second task is going to ask us to save a copy of this document as a plain text file as outline for proposal. So that's the new file name. So we're gonna save that. We'll click on the file uh, tab and then we'll click save as just like we'd normally save a file. And then I'm gonna click browse. And in your exam, you'll probably be asked to uh, save to your documents folder. So I'll go there. And we wanna rename this as outline for proposal and then save as type. So you can save this as a plain uh, text file, which is not a rich text format, but a plain text. So plain text, uh, that's the one. And then we'll save it in our documents folder and I'll click save. So we saved the copy of this, but it's just gonna be like the text one. And this will come up. Um, it'll just give you a little bit of a preview of what that's gonna look like. It's probably not the best for this document, but um, that's how you do that and you just say, okay. Task three is gonna ask us to convert all footnotes to endnotes. And at the bottom of page three here, I have footnotes. And what footnotes are is they're basically a reference on the very same page of your document. So I had a reference somewhere in this paragraph and a little note that goes with that reference at the end, bottom of the page. The endnotes are references somewhere in your document that are going to show up, sort of little notes that are gonna show up at the very end of your document. So converting these footnotes mm -hmm. to endnotes would mean these are gonna to go to the very end of the document instead of being at the end of this page. So to do that, to convert footnotes to endnotes, click on the references tab. And then this is one of those tasks that's gonna uh, get you searching through uh, Microsoft Word. We have to click on this dialog box opener. So footnote and endnote dialog box opener. And then we're gonna click convert here. And then the option, the only option we have is to convert all footnotes to endnotes. And when we press okay, you see that they've disappeared from this page 
but they will reappear at the very end of our document. And that means uh, we've done step three correctly. Task four is gonna ask us to change the margins of the document by setting the top and bottom to 0.5 inches and the left and right to 0.25 inches. So that's in the layout tab. And now we're gonna click on the margins drop arrow. And then we have to go to custom margins. And then when that pops up, this page setup dialog box, uh, we can start making our changes here. Okay, so now that I've made those changes, I've got the uh, top margin at 0.5 inches, the bottom one at 0.5, left and right at 0.25. And just make sure for your exam, if you had a question like this, that you apply it to the whole document, if that's what it's asking for. So the whole document and then press OK. So task five is gonna ask us to check the document for accessibility issues, then correct the first issue that is being reported. So yeah, this is a great feature in Word because it sort of tells you where you know, someone reading your document might find it hard, challenging to read your document and that kind of thing. So to, to check for accessibility issues, go to the file tab and then go to the info tab again. And then we're going to check for issues. These ones fall under the check accessibility and we're just gonna fix the first mistake here, although you should probably uh, try and fix all of them if this was a real thing. And the report, the error being reported is that it's missing alternative text. So you can just do it right here if you click the drop arrow. Now yours, for your exam, depending on which version you get, it might say, you know, you need to merge uh, a cell in a table properly or unmerge it or fix the size of something, make it bigger. It just depends on what you get, but just whatever the whatever the suggestion is, just do it. So right here, it's actually uh, taking me right to the alt text option, which is just add a description. And uh, I'm just gonna quickly describe this table. So that's, that's it. And then once I've done that, the first one goes away. So um, you'll probably just have one on your exam. And uh, once you fix it, it'll just say all, all problems are, are uh, fixed and that's it. So task six is gonna ask us to clear all the formatting from the paragraph that starts with, uh, these are just suggestions. So your 2019 Word exam will do this to you quite a lot. It won't tell you exactly where in the document it is. It won't say like page three, uh, middle paragraph. It'll just say, here's part of a paragraph, uh, go look for it. So uh, we're gonna do that in this step. So in the home tab, when you go to the find, uh, click find, and then we'll just start typing that. Um, you can even copy and paste if you want to. So just copy that uh, beginning of the sentence. And uh, your exam will do this quite often. This is something kind of new in these exams. So just something to look out for. Uh, don't go wasting time just searching it. Look, searching for it just blindly. Try to use the find command. Okay, and then we'll click on the magnifying glass or just press enter. And it takes us right to it. So that's, that's the nice thing. Um, so just type in the navigation bar here, and then we'll just exit that, and then we can continue with our task. So this is gonna happen uh, quite often to you on your exam. You have to know how to use that find feature in Microsoft Word. Okay, so what they want us to do is highlight this, and then remove the formatting, which is stri pretty straightforward after that once we find this. Um, this is in the home tab. There's a, like a icon of a little eraser that says clear all formatting, and we're gonna just click that once and you can see all the formatting disappeared. Step seven, we're going to locate the table in this document and then we're gonna set the spacing to 0 0.03. And that sounds like it's straightforward, but there's a lot to sort of navigate through to get to that point. So the first thing you have to do is click anywhere in the table and then that'll activate this table design and layout tab. It's the layout tab we need. And then we also have to click in the cell size group we're gonna click on the uh, table properties dialog box opener here. And in the tables tab, we have to go down to click options and then click this checkbox that says allow spacing between cells. And the default size is 0 0.01. We're gonna change it to 0 0.03 and then press okay, press okay again. And now this is what our table will look like. And that's how we know we've completed step seven uh, correctly. So in task eight, we're going to change the table of contents. So you see here that uh, the outline, Claudia's proposal, recommendations, these are all heading one headings, and these are heading two headings, and we don't really need these. So the way you would change that is to highlight the section for table of contents, and then in the references tab, click on the table of content drop arrow, and then go to custom table of contents, and then 
this little area right here where it says show levels, there's three levels that were possible. We're just going to click the arrow down twice to make sure that show levels one um, is displayed and then we'll press OK and then we should only see, yes, replace this table of documents. We're going to say yes and now we only see the heading one uh, headings here. So task nine is the last task in this project. And to complete this task, we're going to set the line spacing of the entire document to uh, 1.4 lines. So if you get a task like this, to select the entire document, you would have to go to the top of the document and put your insertion point at the very top. And then I think the quickest way to select the entire document is to use the keyboard shortcut Control A. So if I have my insertion point here and I select Control and A at the same time on my keyboard, the whole document um, gets selected and now I can go to the second part where it's um, I'm going to change the line spacing to 1.4 lines. Uh, this can be a little bit tricky because this is in the paragraph settings dialog box launcher here, the paragraph uh, dialog box and the line spacing section is here but as you can see there's no option for 1.4 but there is an option to make a custom line spacing and that's the multiple option so if I click on that and then I change this to 1.4. That's how I would alter the document and complete this task. You might have to use something like this if you, let's say, if you wanted to make your resume, but it was, and you wanted to make it two pages, but it was sort of going on to the third page. The default line spacing is 1.08 lines. And so if you wanted to sort of cram everything onto those two pages, you could um, choose the line spacing multiple option and then just change it to like 0.8 or 0.9 and that's kind of a sneaky way to sort of cram everything on the same page and customize the line spacing. So that's how you would complete that kind of task. Now if you had a similar task where you had to change the line spacing to let's say uh, 15 points exactly, you would do exactly 15 points like that. Okay, So that's another line spacing uh, task that you might have to face. But ours is multiple and then we're gonna change it to 1.4 lines and we're gonna press OK and I'll show you what that looks like. So it's sort of like in between double space and single space. Single space being 1.08, double space being two and this is sort of in between and it kind of looks like that uh, from the spacing of our text. All right, so we'll get started on project two. This is the Himalayan Coffee House project and the first task is gonna ask us to display the retrospect header on all pages except the first page. So I'm on the first page right now, and we wanna make sure that the we insert a header on every page in this document except the first page. So the first thing I have to do is click on the Insert tab, and then click the header drop arrow in this uh, header and footer group, and then search for the retrospect theme. So I'll double click on that, and it'll show the first time it appears on the second page, but now we have to scroll up and make sure that it's not on the first page, and it's not because uh, this different first page checkbox is checked. So that means that the header is going to appear on every document or every page of the document except the first page. So if that wasn't checked on your exam, you have to make sure that you check off different first page and then it won't show up on the first page. And now we can close our header and footer tab and we can move on to the next task. So in task two, we're going to insert a very unique symbol to the left of the part one schedules heading, and we're going to use the Webdings font and character code 166 to search for this. So I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is click the insertion point just to the left of this heading, and then you'll navigate your way to the insert tab, and then from there go to the very right of the ribbon and click on this symbols drop arrow, and then we'll click on more symbols. And then from here, you'd have to scroll down the font gallery to Webdings, so I'll click on Webdings and then just type in the character code here, which is awesome because that way we don't have to kind of scroll through and, and try to find it. Uh, we can just type in the character code. So when I type in 166, you see this little agenda pop up or the first of the month symbol, and then I can just click Insert and then Close, and now we've got that very unique symbol to the left of our Part 1 Schedules heading. In task three, we're going to apply the soft round bevel shape effect to the smart art graphics. So there's two challenging things you need to be aware about if you face a task like this. Um, the first one is make sure you select the actual smart art graphic and not one of the objects in the smart art graphic. I'll show you what that looks like. So if I select with my mouse somewhere at the top of this smart art graphic, and let's say I double click by accident, what I'm really doing is selecting only the speed object here. I'm not selecting the whole graphic. So what you have to do is make sure if you're going to make some alterations to this, 
click on the outside box and make sure that just all of the uh, shapes are selected, not just one of them. Okay, and that's uh, the first challenging aspect of a task like this. The second one is finding the shape effect or the style. So if I go to the Smart Art Design tab, um, I could get this confused with some of the styles, which do add a little bit of a bevel effect, like the polish one here, or maybe the uh, inset um, style. But these are Smart Art styles, so you have to be able to determine whether are they asking me for a style or a shape effect, right? So it's a little bit different. Um, the shape effects are in the format tab and they're right here in the shape effects drop arrow and they're asking for a very specific one, the bevel one. So I'll go down to the bevel menu and then I have to choose one that's a soft round bevel and that's this one here. So now when I click on that, I've added the soft round bevel shape effect to the smart art graphic. Our fourth task is going to ask us to change the text wrap of the image on the second page to the square text wrap. So to do that, we'll click on this picture on the second page here. That'll activate the picture format tab up here. And we'll click on that and then go to the wrap text drop arrow. And from here, we can choose a bunch of text wraps and we want the square one. So we'll click on that. And that's how you would complete that type of task. Task five, we're going to insert a file property the coffee shops as a category. So you might get a few like this one on your exam, depending on which version you get. And to do something like this, you would go to the file tab and then we'll click on the info tab here. And then you notice in the properties section here that we don't see one for categories, which means you're most likely going to have to click the show all properties. And now we see the categories pop up and we're going to type in coffee shops with a capital C and lowercase s for shops and just be careful with this one um, a lot of people will get this one wrong either in gmetrics or the certiport version of these exams just for pressing spacebar after this one so just click outside of that and then just make sure the spelling is correct and it is from what um, the spelling is in the task and then we would just now we we'll just go back to um, the home page and go back so now on to task six. This is the largest task of this project and it's the last task of this project. And if you had a task like this on your exam, this is probably weighted uh, the most, this would probably be the largest kind of task you'd have. There's a lot of steps involved. So let's get right into it. We're going to find the empty space at the bottom of page two, and then we're gonna insert a scroll horizontal shape that contains the text thank you, which means we're gonna have to type that in. And then we're gonna position the shape at the bottom center of the page with a tight text wrapping. So that's quite a lot. Um, you would be given the maximum amount of marks um, allotted to that type of task. So you would first go to the insert tab to do that and then you're going to find the shapes in the shapes drop arrow and then we're going to scroll down to the stars and banner menu here and we're looking for the horizontal yeah the scroll horizontal shape so that's this one and from the question it doesn't seem like we care about how big this is as long as it's positioned correctly and you type in the thank you message. So just start typing. Uh, if you have this selected, just start typing on your keyboard. You don't have to do anything special. Um, just type in thank you with an exclamation mark. If you get a task like this where you have to type in something, um, just type whatever is between the quotation marks, even if it's something like this where it's an exclamation mark. And now we're going to, the first thing we'll do is position this where the, the task is asking us to. So with this highlighted, I'll click on the position drop arrow and then I'm going to choose the more layout options and then for the vertical alignment I'm going to change that by clicking this little checkbox here and then I'm going to choose the bottom of the page so it might be on margin uh, you have to change that to page and then for the horizontal alignment I'm going to change that to the centered option and then of the page and that's how you would complete a task like this when it comes to uh, positioning. Now you can also click the text wrapping uh, tab here and then choose the tight text wrap. Okay, so now we press OK and, we, and here's what our shape looks like at the bottom center of the page. So we'll get started on project three. The first task is going to ask you to replace all instances of environmental school project with ESP, ESP. And to do that, you'd go to the find command or the replace button in the home tab. So I'll click there, and then I'm going to type in the environmental school project in the find what bar. So find what, uh, the environmental school project, and then we're going to replace it with ESP. And then I'll make sure that I click 
replace all, and then it says 13 replacements, I'll click OK, and that's how we complete a task like task one. Task two is gonna ask us to go to the how can VIP kids section, and then we're gonna continue the numbering of the list so that the list numbers one and two in this section change to four and five. So you're gonna get tasks like this on your exam where it's gonna ask you to locate a section. It's not gonna tell you where it is in the document. So for you to do that, you have to be able to uh, click the find button here like we did in the last task, but instead of replacing, just look for um, a place in the document. So when we say find and we type up this navigation bar here, we'll start typing how can VIP kids. And this is the this will take us right to the area in our document we need to go and then we'll just exit this. So you're gonna have to do that a few times uh, on your exam. So again, that's just in the find button and then just start typing the area or the section uh, that you're supposed to go to and it'll take you right there. So um, now we can start with this task. From this section, now we can continue the numbering or continue the list uh, from the number three. So you want this number one to change to four and this one to change to five to continue the numbering from a previous section. So to do that, I'll click on the first number and then I will right click on that. And yes, you can right click. I've had questions about that. Are you allowed to right click? Uh, you can and it's easier and it's um, a faster way to complete a task like this. So right click, continue numbering. And when I do that now, uh, these headings change to four and five, and that's how you would complete a task like task two. Task three is gonna ask us to go to the learning theories and skills learn section and then resolve the comments. So just like before, we'll look for that section by pressing find, and then in the navigation bar, just type in learning theories, and this is our learning theories and skills learn section. Then I can put the insertion point on the page and just um, exit this navigation bar. And then I have to kind of turn on comments by going to the review tab and saying show comments. So I want them to, I want the comments to pop up and you can see to the right, there's a little like comment section. Um, we can just click there. Once I, I'll just minimize so you can see it. I'll click there and then just say, um, so that's the comment and then click resolve to resolve it. And that's how you complete a task like task three. The task four is going to make us look for the paragraph that starts with these two case studies and then we're going to add a bookmark at the beginning of that paragraph called conclusion. So again, get in the practice of locating things in a document really quickly without having to kind of manually search for them. So you type these two case studies in the navigation bar and then put your insertion point right here and then we can exit this navigation bar here. And with the insertion point there, we can go to the insert tab and then I'm going to click on the bookmark icon and we have to call this bookmark uh, conclusion and then add it. And now if we were to, if this was a really long document, we could get to this section just by um, clicking on our bookmarks and then click go to the conclusion bookmark. Task five is going to ask us to go to the space under uh, the last paragraph in this document and then we're going to insert a new table that has three columns and six rows. And in the middle column, we're gonna, on the top row, we're gonna type advantages. And on the, um, the cell on the top, on the right, we're gonna type disadvantages. And then we're gonna fit the table to its content. So if you've ever used Excel, that's like using the auto fit command. Uh, but we're gonna create this table from the insert tab. So I'll put my insertion point here at the bottom of the page and then go to the table drop arrow in the insert tab. And then I can actually draw the table from here but if you want to make sure that you've got the right uh, column settings, just I would I like to go to here, uh, the insert table dialog box, and then I can just uh, type in the numbers that I need. So the number of columns is three, and there are six rows. And then also from here, the last part of this says fit the table to its contents. So we'll just do that from this window here uh, by clicking auto fit to contents. And then when I type in disadvantages, the um, table will expand to include that text, which is nice. So I'll press OK. And then the, I'll click advantages here. And then press tab. And then in the uh, top right cell, I'll type in disadvantages. OK, and there's our table. That's all we need to do to complete a task like task five. So task six is gonna ask us to apply the lines, the stylish lines style set to the entire document. So just like in our last project, 
you're going to press go to the um, top of the document the very beginning of it and then press Control a on your keyboard to select the whole document and then this one is a little bit tricky because it says apply the uh, line style set which can be confused by the style gallery here so you're never going to find this in the styles gallery um, that's something different the style sets are in the design tab so not the styles gallery in the home tab it's the style sets or document formatting gallery here so a style set is in here and if you're asked for some type of black and white style set that's over here um, there's different variants to that there's the classic one there's the numbered one but the ones we're asked for the lines one are on the right side of this gallery so lines distinctive line simple and I think this is the line stylish right here so that's the one we need so again the lines types are over here the black and white types are over here and just make sure we get lines stylish and then just apply that to the whole document now that I've highlighted the whole document and uh, keep in, keep that in mind there's a difference between a style set and a style task 7 on the other hand is gonna make us apply a style to the first row of the table that we created and it's the subtle emphasis style so we're gonna highlight the first row of the text just in case we add text in this uh, left column later we'll highlight the whole row and then from the home tab we'll open the styles gallery and then we're gonna try to navigate to the uh, subtle emphasis style we'll click on that and you can see that the text changed to the style of uh, the subtle emphasis style now we're on to our final project uh, project 4 and task 1 is gonna have us search for the sentence or part of a sentence that starts with and I was very proud and then we're gonna add a continuous section break at the end of that uh, sentence so to find that sentence we have to go to the find command again and in the navigation bar we're just gonna type in part of that sentence so proud and then I'm gonna put the insertion point at the end of that sentence and then just exit this navigation bar and then all right so I'll put a our insertion point there and then in the layout tab um, there's the breaks drop arrow that's how we would add a continuous a section break and this is going to set us up for the next task so we have to set up this uh, continuous break properly so I'm going to click the breaks drop arrow and then choose the continuous one under the section break section and that's going to allow us to proceed with task 2 for task 2 we're going to locate the biggest event section and then we're going to convert the two paragraphs to three columns so the two paragraphs here we want this in three columns but we only want it for this section we don't want it for the whole document so that's why I had you create a continuous section break in the last task and there's always there's also one that was already there so if you ever want to do this um, for your own documents you have to section this section off with a continuous break on either side so that'll allow us to change these two paragraphs to three columns and without doing that for the rest of the uh, document so for this I will highlight this whole section so or these two paragraphs right to the end of them and then I can go to the layout tab again and then choose the column drop arrow and then I can put in uh, three columns so I can choose three you might also have to add some more elements like this where you do three columns here and then add a line between but that's not what the instructions are asking us so we'll just do keep it to three columns and press OK and that's what uh, that would look like Task 3 is going to ask us to locate the document header and then we're going to apply the fill aqua accent one shadow text effect to that text so I've got the uh, document header right here and I'm going to double click on it and then highlight it and then within this uh, header and footer uh, menu I'm going to go back to the home tab this is really just asking us for word art so without saying it this is word art or text effects and topography and that's in the home tab and I'm gonna click the drop arrow there and I'm gonna look for an aqua fill so I'm gonna look for aqua fill this one looks like an aqua fill accent color one shadow and that's the one we want so I'll click on that and that's how you would complete a task like task 3 so task 4 is gonna ask us to change the bullet points to custom ones we're gonna use a coffee symbol instead of the check marks for these bullet points and this is we're gonna find this symbol in the I don't know how to pronounce this but this type of font 
and the, with the character code uh, 2615. So I'm going to highlight my points here, and then in the bullet drop arrow, I'm going to choose that, and then say define new bullet. So I'm going to click on that, click on symbol, and then I'm going to look for the, I'll start typing in Sago, Sagoe, um, Sagoe, and we want the uh, emoticon one. UI emo emoji, emoji, sorry, UI emoji, and then the character code is uh, 2615. And that'll bring us this coffee symbol, and then we'll press OK, and we'll press OK here, and now uh, this changes to a coffee symbol instead of the check marks that we previously had. So in task five, we're going to look for the first paragraph after the introduction heading, and we're going to insert a footnote after the word, or sorry, before the word metal, and it's going to read the metal was a special kind made from the wing of an airplane. So to do that, we're going to have to locate uh, where that word is in this document. So I'm going to click the find, and then just type in uh, metal, and then see where it is. Okay, so that's where I want to put our insertion point is right, right before the word metal and then I'll exit uh, this navigation bar. And from here, we want to insert a footnote. So I'm going to go over to the uh, References tab, click on that, and click on Insert Footnote. And from here, we want to type in, or you can copy and paste. See, what I would do is uh, pay, sorry, copy this text from your instructions. And you can totally do that on your exam. Uh, it'll save you time if there's a long sentence like this and put it right in the footnote. I'll just do a normal paste probably just keep the merge formatting here okay so the metal was a special kind of metal from the wing of an airplane so it's just like it is here without the quotation marks and that is how you would complete a task like task 5 step 6 in this project is going to ask us to accept all insertions and deletions and reject all formatting changes so a quick way to do that is go to the review tab so I'll click on that and then in the tracking group I'm going to choose the reviewing pane. Now, it doesn't matter whether you review the pane in vertical view or horizontal. Uh, I'll choose vertical, just easy. Uh, this dialog box comes up, and I'm just going to, it says, reject all formatting. So this is a formatting change that was made. I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to reject the formatting change. I'm going to accept these next two. So I'm going to right-click on uh, this insertion and then I'm going to say accept insertion and then on this last one uh, I'm going to accept the deletion as well and then I would just exit and that's how you would complete a task like task 6. If you want to know what other skills are, will be on your MO100 exam please check out this video that I uploaded about a year ago it's got things like how to repeat table headers on a different page which is a skill you'll have to know for your MO100 exam and I hope this helps you Get certified and unlock new opportunities for yourself. We'll see you in that one. Bye for now.